This video is for those of you who find yourself clipping things into Notion and maybe find your workspace overflowing with unprocessed notes and ideas, things that you want to read someday, podcasts that you want to listen to, and you find yourself not really going back and visiting those links. The last thing that we want is for your Notion space to turn into a digital filing cabinet full of things that you never check out ever again. That's something that I used to do when I used Evernote. And so I find in Notion, you do have to do a little bit more customization to make sure that you are resurfacing that information in a really intelligent way. So I wanna share with you a processing dashboard. This is a dashboard that I use to clear out information toward the end of the day, any inspiration, links I've been clipping, inbox, courses that I'm taking and give myself one central place where I can review that information, add any additional tags, process it, turn it into next actions and be done with it. So this does take a little bit of practice. It becomes a bit of a muscle that you have to work out every day at a minimum, at least every week is something that I would recommend doing with this processing dashboard. So let's hop in and I'm going to show you how I've set up this processing dashboard and hopefully it gives you some ideas of how you might want to set up yours. So as you can see here, I've got this dashboard called process. It's pretty simple, elegant. I love the look of it. You can tuck things into toggle so you don't have to see everything all at once. So it doesn't feel too busy. First things first, I have this inbox here, and this is a place where my assistant can save any replies that I get from my email newsletters. She rounds them up, puts them in an item here in my inbox, and that way I can review this here without having to review my inbox. If you don't necessarily have somebody checking your email for you, you can still use this um, on your own, or again, you don't have to use the inbox. You can use any other uh, quick capture notes or anything that you use in your workspace. And so as you can see here, I've got two databases embedded here, technically three because I have an inbox archive here, but I have an inbox embedded here and it's just filtered to only show anything where the status is empty or replied is unchecked. Because as soon as I check these emails and I've responded to them, I mark those off as complete and they disappear from this dashboard. Haven't done that yet, so I'm not gonna check that off. Sometimes when I review this, I might have a task for myself, like, oh, I really wanna get back to that person, wanna reconnect with them, call them, or something like that. So I will sometimes drag this from the inbox into actions, or I'll just create a new action based on the task above. And this is filtered to only show everything where a date is today, owner is me, effort is low, and uh, done is incomplete. And basically what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm creating a number of parameters such that if I create something new here, it's automatically gonna have all of those parameters. So usually the assumption is that when I'm responding to an email, those things are fairly small. So again, a low effort task that I can reply to quickly takes less than a Pomodoro. So that's kind of how I handle the inbox area. Once that's done, I move on to the library. Now the library is what I used to have named my knowledge hub. It doesn't really matter what you call it, whatever you decide, wherever you're using to clip articles, podcasts, courses, all of that good stuff you can include here. So I've got a library here of all my clippings and this is filtered to show me everything that has a status that's empty or the last edit is within the last week. That way you're not clipping things into your library and then they kind of disappear and you forget to resurface them. So I have them showing up here so that I go, okay, I need time to read these articles. And so depending if I have time today and I wanna read these articles and process them, I can do that. Otherwise, sometimes I say, you know what? I want to batch all of these things here and I wanna read them on Saturday morning. So I will go through and batch these and assign them. So basically I'll open this up and I say, okay, love and money, how they're connected. Okay, right, this is a Wall Street Journal article I remember Kay recommended that in his newsletter. And so I'm gonna say it's an article type and I might even relate this to topics and tags. Maybe that's you know, relationships and status is reference. Or again, I can say next, read, check this out, whatever. And I have other dashboards that have these filtered in different ways. But essentially, as soon as I give this a status, it's gonna disappear from this area. So I'm gonna put this in the check this out area and you'll see that disappears. And that moves into other dashboards that I have, but this is just for the initial processing. Similar here, I've got this article that I saved this morning. I can add a date here and sometimes I'll just add a date to remind myself. So let's say I wanna read this on the weekend. I can turn that on. 
Remind me on the day of the event. Great. I did actually already read this, so I'm going to uh, call that reference. And that was an article. That's a topic that's related to planning. Great. Maybe I want to add that to my journal today so that I can track that I read that today. And sometimes I'll add the author name and any other tags that I want to give this. And so maybe I say, oh, I want to reread that. So even though I read it, I want to make sure that I reread it. And then I do have a separate uh, dashboard, which I'll get into in a future video. But really, this is just the place for processing that. And so that way, again, you can say, did I read it? If so, what do I want to do with it? Do I want to save it for future reference? Or do I want to remind myself this weekend to read that article and do something specific with it? In some cases, maybe I'll add an idea. So this is just kind of the home base. And then I go to my courses here. And so usually by default, I have this on um, active courses. So anything that is uh, type contains online course and status is in progress will show up here. And I can look at these courses and kind of look at uh, whether or not there's homework to be done or next actions or just kind of remind myself, oh, right, I did sign up for this course, but I haven't really been doing anything much with it. Maybe I need to change the status. So this one, I can say I actually completed that one. So I can either say read or complete or reference. That one's good to go. And I might even, again, click on the reread because I have other places where I do filter uh, these items to show me everything that has reread selected. So then I've got my active courses and then I review the back burner courses too and just kind of look at what else has been in there that could be useful but is kind of idle. And I go through and I can just filter those statuses however I want. And then once that's done, I can also do the same thing with to read. So, you know, for those of you that might add a lot of items to your list, I, this one just has status is next, but this probably should also have a property that are next. Yep. So I've got a bunch there. Great. So once that's done, I can close that up. Let's move on to inspiration. So I often will save things into my inspiration database, and these just show the most recent ones in the last week. And I do have one that has no status here. So it tends to default to this view. And this will just show me everything that's been clipped in the past month where the status is empty. And as soon as I add a status, it will disappear from there. And I just like to have this recent one too that's just filtered to show me within the last month. And I can look at these. I really like these infographics. Maybe there's something that I want to use for my own course or my own blog posts. And so I just like to clip these into there. I think we're good close that up. Notes and ideas, similarly, uh, process this. And it doesn't mean that you have to do the work that's required to take this to the next step. This is just the processing and delegating. So for example, there's this YNAB with a notion, note, or idea. And so somebody messaged me and sent me a Loom video and said, hey, is there a way that I could do this the, the way that I use YNAB? Could I recreate that inside of Notion? And I thought, that's a great idea for a YouTube video. So I might come in here and say, create content. And maybe I want to uh, set that for the weekend, make sure to turn on a reminder for myself. Great. The context is a uh, YouTube idea. And it's not published. I don't need to add anything here. I think most of those I can keep pretty simple. Topics and tags, I might also just add YouTube as well. And I can summarize this interesting idea for a YouTube video. And let's also add uh, money and finances. Great. So I'm not doing the work of creating the video. I'm just processing this and assigning something to myself. And in some cases, I might need to assign a next action to myself. Most of these all have relations as well, so I should be able to actually assign myself a next action and say record video walkthrough of how to do YNAB and Notion. Right, so I can make myself a task right through here, and then I can use other views of actions to show anything that hasn't been given a date or hasn't been processed yet. So this one, I'll actually show you how I would handle that. 
But the idea is that, again, you're just processing this stuff. You're not actually doing the work. So more real examples, use cases of managing and operating online courses and working with editorial calendars in Notion. Cool. So that was feedback in the course that also is a great YouTube idea. So I'm going to also add that additional context. Similarly, I might just set up a reminder for myself. So let's uh, add a note on the weekend again, Saturday mornings. I like to do that. All right, so I've got a reminder for myself. The status is uh, I want to create content around this. Great. That works for the moment. All right, somebody wanted to see an updated idea of my uh, planning template. And since we do have an office hours coming up for that, that's going to be great. I'm actually going to set myself a reminder for tomorrow to do this. Great. Excellent. And again, since that's filtered to only show things where the status is empty or next actions is empty, then that gets cleared out. Actions. Great. And then at this point, there may be some things that have uh, come along and might need assigning and, and creating a task around it. So for example, creating that YNAB video. So what I might do here is I might say, turn this into a group. So I want where potentially the owner is empty. And day is later or day is empty. And the reason I'm doing this is because when I rapidly added that task that you saw earlier, because it has no properties, it's not going to show up anywhere. And I want to make sure that I have a place where that's going to show up here. So right, record a video walkthrough of how to do YNAB is going to show up here. And that way all of these sort of unprocessed tasks are going to show up here. And then again, I can process this, I can defer it, I can assign it. Ideally, I want to be assigning these a date so that they have a next action, right? I can decide, okay, that was something that I wanted to watch. Right? I want to check that out. So I can again assign myself this stuff and say, okay, I want to check that out tomorrow. Assign that to myself. Right, As soon as I assign these, they're going to start to disappear uh, from this page here. So again, I have a lot of templates for these as well. So if this is a uh, outsource task or something for a client, I'm just going to click on essential. And that's going to automatically assign a bunch of those properties for me. Great. So I think that's something that I could do next week. And I'm going to turn the rem reminder on. Often use these reminders to uh, yeah, send myself a little note. Great. Type is content. Excellent. And so I would go through, assign all of those, give next actions to progress. I mean, I could even include a database of my projects in here if I wanted to as well. But the idea is that you have one central place and you can book yourself 15 minutes a day at the end of the day to go through and do this. It might seem really annoying, but when you get in the habit of clearing out things and just kind of reviewing, sometimes you end up reviewing things that you forgot you'd put on your list or articles that have been sitting on your to read list forever. If after three months, six months, it's still there and you haven't read it, maybe it's time to delete it. So getting into the habit of having a processing dashboard can really keep you on top of the things that you're paying attention to and help you cut out the stuff that doesn't really help you. It's not moving you forward. Doing this process has actually helped me be a lot more discerning with what I'm saving into my Notion workspace because the idea is that I am summarizing and giving additional data to everything that I'm storing and saving in my workspace because I want to do something with it. I want to turn it into a project. I want it to be more useful. I'm not just saving everything for the sake of saving it for some day, maybe. So I highly recommend Consider making yourself a processing dashboard, someplace where you can go once a day, once a week, where you can go and clear out those things and just get the loose ends out of your brain and give yourself a place to process that information. I think oftentimes we actually forget to book time in our calendar to do these kinds of processing and decision making and delegating tasks. And so we think of things as planning our time and then doing, but we often don't really make space for that in-between time where we actually need to make decisions about what to do next and how how to assign next actions. So I hope you'll consider making yourself a processing dashboard and getting into the habit of doing this to clear out the day's clutter, just to make sure that you are staying on top of the most important pieces of your workspace so they are not being filled with clutter.
I hope this was helpful. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.